I come from a demographic that, interestingly, may not actually exist, but uh, to those who self-identify as members of this demographic, it most certainly does exist. I refer to something that I suppose can be loosely called the respectable working class. I grew up in a working class neighborhood in a rented apartment. Uh, we never had a great deal of money. Um, but this idea of us being a good family was very important. In fact, it was hammered into me from the uh, moment I was old enough to understand such things. In other words, uh, your father has a job. My mother en ended up having a job as soon as we were old enough to go off to school. Um, we wear decent clothing. Um, we uh, actually care about the way that uh, the house looks that sort of thing. This idea of respectability was very important to my parents, especially my mother. And the unfortunate flip side to that sense of uh, respectability was a complete disdain for people that might be equally loosely and I think racistly referred to as white trash. Your father works, not like those bums across the street. We are a good family here. This is a respectable home. I think that anyone who's grown up in that sort of circumstance will recognize the attitudes that I'm referring to. And that kind of a prejudice is something that's not really easy to shake, especially when it's, when it's inculcated into you from the moment you're born. There are times when, even today, I catch myself sort of recoiling almost in this, with a sense of physical disgust to people that I subconsciously identify as, yes, white trash. The thinking was, um, white trash uh, do nothing but uh, breed, drink coffee and smoke cigarettes and swear at each other while sitting in lawn chairs in the front of their houses. Um, there's uh, nothing better for them to do but to commit petty crimes, acts of vandalism, um, and just get in trouble and act disreputably in every possible way. Uh, the girls get pregnant when they're 15, and uh, they ha none of them have any teeth by the time they're 30. That kind of odious attitude. Society, if we want to go looking for one, will always have an underclass. People who say that there's a racial or genetic or biological uh, explanation for this are, if you ask me, ignoring the fact that even if there weren't distinct races, there would be an underclass. J. Philip Rushton uh, has done some, in my opinion, pseudoscientific research where he has demonstrated that um, certain uh, genetic uh, programming results in membership in society's underclass. Now, the interesting thing is, his research is completely devoid of any explanation as to why there will be an underclass, regardless of whether or not there are races. He says that certain ethnic groups, certain racial types, certain genetic types, biological types, are predisposed to, to membership in the underclass. But he doesn't have a genetic or a biological explanation as to why that underclass exists at all. If he can explain to me, biologically or genetically, why there is an underclass, I'd be more likely to listen than when he uses his seemingly scientific explanation to blame the whole thing on certain people because of the way that they look. Thank you.